Hey what's going on everyone, in this video I'm going to show you how to root, unlock the bootloader and load a custom recovery on the Nexus 4 running Android 4.3. However, this method, uh, all the instructions in this video will be compatible with a whole bunch of different Nexus devices on various Android versions. So I'm just showing you how to do this on a Nexus 4, but this will work for a whole bunch of other Nexus devices with different versions of Android. Uh, so first off, all credits and props goes to Wugfresh. Oops on XDA developers, what I suggest you do is you go on this page, log in, hit the thanks button below, and better yet, even donate to them for all their hard work. Um, to get this page, to get access to this page, I'll put a link in the descri description below. Just expand the description below and then you'll find a link to this page. Uh, the most important thing about this page is that this is where the original uh, instructions are and re this is where you can access the file. Uh, furthermore, I am not a developer. So if you have any technical questions, I will most likely not answer them because I'm not a developer. I wouldn't know how to help you. So if you have any technical questions, this is this forum post is where you should ask. Okay, so ask in here, not me. Um, so as I was saying, this is where you access the uh, files. So what you do is you simply scroll down just a little bit, and then you see a link to an external website on the first post, wogfresh.com slash whatever. Uh, and then you'll be presented with this page. As of this date right now, you're seeing that this version 1.7.1. Uh, so here is all the compatible Nexus devices. You can either pause the video right now or just go to the website yourself and see it for yourself. The only one I see that's not here is a Nexus One, but that phone is like four or five years old now. So uh, what you do is just scroll down just a little bit to download. Here you'll see that there's a link. You can uh, click this one, download it. If for some reason it doesn't work, then you can try a mirror link. Okay, it's the same thing. It's just like a backup link for those of you that don't know what a mirror is. By attempting to follow the instructions in this video, should something go wrong, you could permanently damage your device. If that is the case, I take no responsibility. So we are following instructions in this video at your own risk. So what you should do is, even if everything does go right, you will lose everything on your phone. Okay, so that counts as pictures, music, everything. Because when you unlock the bootloader, it erases everything. So right now, I suggest you back up all your stuff before continuing any further. And what you want to do is basically access um, ADB debugging mode, just in case. So you go to your system settings on your tablet or phone or whatever uh, settings. Then go all the way down to about phone or it might be about tablet if you're on a tablet. Then go down to build number and you're going to tap it repeatedly. This is a countdown, you're not a developer. And now you have developer options. Okay. You're going to check mark USB debugging. And what's going to happen is when you... When you download that program and you install it, uh, here I have it myself. When you run it for the first time, it's going to ask you what device you have. So for me, I'm going to select Nexus 4. And notice that there's like different versions of the Nexus 7, the Nexus S. It is imperative that yours matches with this, okay? You must make sure yours matches. If you don't know which one, just Google it. Then you select your build number. This is what I'm currently running. Uh, the build number is right here, as I showed you guys. I'll show you again. So you go to your, you go to your system settings, and you go to about phone or about tablet at the bottom, and build number is right there. See, I'm running JWR66V. Right here is Android 4.3 JWR66V. So I'm gonna click that, apply. After I selected my Android version. The program actually explains to you how to get USB debugging up and running, but I already showed you guys that. So what you're going to do now is connect your device to your uh, computer, just with the USB cord, nothing too fancy, just like this. I know it's a little bit dark, but uh, just bear with me. It's... And what you should see now is that drivers should be installing. These drivers have to install properly, okay? They should install properly, and if you get something saying transfer files, just close it up. We're not going to transfer anything right now. So my de device is ready to use. I'm running Windows 7. It's telling me to install this thingy. Just press OK. OK, so you're going to get this thing up here. Trying to download something. And then my phone is telling me to allow this from the computer. I'm just going to press OK. And it's going to start loading it. OK, so after it took about a minute, then it's asking me to install something for a team win recovery project. I'm going to press OK. OK, so once those files installed, in the corner here, very quickly, and uh, this little prompt came up saying your all the updates are ready for this program. Um, so this is this is basically the uh, this is the program itself. This is where it's going to run everything. So what we want to do now is click unlock because we're going to unlock the bootloader. 
and my phone is still connected with the USB cord and it's still in USB debugging mode. I'm gonna press unlock because I wanna unlock the bootloader first. All right, so this window pops up. It's basically telling you that, you know, once you unlock the bootloader, you can do basically anything you want with it. That's exactly what I want. Everything will be wiped. Uh, so back up all your stuff. I already went through that and uh, I'm ready to continue, so I'm gonna press OK. Okay, so basically it's telling you to go into bootloader mode. Now there's two methods of doing this. One is to power off your device and follow instructions here. Uh, when it's off, then you press and hold the down volume button and the power button at the same time. But my device is still connected, it's still on, and USB debugging mode is still on. So I'm gonna let the program restart it for me in bootloader mode. So because I'm still uh, connected and USB debugging mode is on, I'm gonna press yes, I'm gonna allow the script to boot me into bootloader mode for me. So as you can see, it's checking ADB. Uh, it's gonna be doing a whole bunch of stuff in the background. And now, okay, as you can see, it's giving him this prompt warning. Because on my phone, as you can see, it's still connected. It's very essential to have it connected. It's asking me to void the warranty and unlock the bootloader. That's exactly what I want to do. Oh, and by the way, if you want to know how to relock the bootloader, unroot, and um, load stock recovery, I'll show you how to do that in a separate video, and that video will be in the description below. Oh, so, okay, so by selecting the up volume button, uh, I want to select unlock the bootloader. So then I'm going to press the power button on it. Let me show you like this. As you can see, lock state unlocked. The bootloader is now unlocked. The device may restart a couple times, and you can see the padlock is now unlocked. It might restart once or twice. That's perfectly normal. When it's done, then we'll continue from there. Once the device is finished restarting, actually during the device restart, all the instructions actually show up right here in front of you while the device is booting up. As it says, it, it boots a couple times. Um, once the device is fully started up, it gives you the regular, you know, welcome to Android, log in your Gmail, blah, blah, blah. I skipped all that. Okay, just just for the sake of saving time. And again, we need to activate debugging modes. So you can go to your system settings, go down to about phone or about tablet, go all the way down, keep tapping the build number until the countdown is done. You are now a developer. Press the back button, go to developer options. Uh, developer options should be on, and you're gonna go down to USB debugging, press OK. And at this point, you're gonna reconnect. Uh, Basically, when the Android login thing came in with your Gmail, I disconnected my phone from the computer. Um, right at this point, I'm gonna reconnect it. Uh, you can do the same when when you're when you're logged in Android properly. You can disconnect from your computer and then activate debugging mode and then reconnect. I connected in USB debugging mode again. Uh, I'm not gonna transfer files and I'm gonna press OK just to close this. Okay, so what we wanna do now is we wanna root and load a custom recovery. So how do we do that? It's really simple. On this main program interface, what you're gonna do is go to root. Now, if you just wanna root, just click root. If you wanna root and lo load a custom recovery, which I'm gonna show you how to do, it's very simple. You click custom recovery, and then you click root. Okay, so you get this huge uh, warning, basically saying it's, it is possible to go back to uh, stock recovery and unroot the device. You know, it's, it's all good. As I said, I'll make a video for that. This message is also telling you that your device must be unlocked. Your, your bootloader must be unlocked. I already showed you guys how to do that, so you guys should have done that already too. And what I'm gonna do is press OK because I'm ready to continue. It's gonna do its thing and then we'll continue from there. Okay, so currently it's saying that my device is not connected in ADB debugging mode. Yet it is. As you can see right there, ADB is connected. So what I'm gonna do is just actually turn it off, turn it on, press OK. This is, this is something common, uh, and you get this warning prompt, I'm just gonna press OK, saying it's trying to get something from the computer. This is pretty common when I try to root other devices where uh, ADB debugging mode kind of messes things up. You just turn it off and on. And now I'm gonna press OK to retry again. And as you can see, the device is connected. So it's now, it's now working properly. All I did was turn debugging mode off and on. And we'll continue once it's done. All right, so one more update. Basically, the device restarted, and I got the pop-up window yet again saying, do you want to transfer files to your Android device, all that stuff. Just ignore it, and it went to bootloader mode yet again. Um, just ignore everything. You know what? Grab a granola bar or something, or a glass of water. Come back after a while, uh, but we'll continue. I just wanted to give you guys a heads up. Don't touch anything until it's completely 100% done. Okay, so after waiting a long time, uh, it, it took a few minutes for this procedure to do its thing in the background. And what I noticed is that the phone finally started up normally. However, what happened is when the phone started up normally, uh, um, it just said here waiting for a device. And I went for like, you know, downstairs for like two, three minutes. And I came back, it still said waiting for a device. 
So what I had, had to actually do is go to um, developer options. I already showed you guys how to do that multiple times. You go to, um, where is it? Settings, and you should have access to the option already. It should say developer options. I had to turn off USB debugging and quickly turn it back on again. And then as soon as I turn it back on, you know, it gives you a warning prompt box saying whatever. Just press OK. And then all of a sudden, right away, you get this other box showing up saying your computer wants to transfer some sort of file. I pressed OK on that. And then finally, it detected my device after another few seconds of waiting. So depending on which Nexus device and which version of Android, you may or may not have to quickly turn off USB debugging after it's nearly done, but I had to. Okay, so basically it's giving me some instructions to test root, so we're going to do just that. What we're going to do is go to the apps listing. Okay. We're going to open Super SU. Program says that you might have to update your binaries. I didn't get that warning, so I guess the binaries are okay. Then we're going to look for BusyBox, which is right over here. And they recommend that you have a solid internet connection on your uh, phone or tablet. It's asking, do you want to give root access? I'm going to grant it. There, I already now have confirmed that we have root access. Okay, so after BusyBox had done a whole bunch of stuff in the background, um, what the developer of the program recommends you do is you tap will be installed to and switch system bin to system slash x bin. Okay, all you're going to do is hit install. I'll choose the smart install method and we'll wait. All right, so it says everything is successfully installed and uh, that's pretty much it. You're done. So if you want to know how to boot into uh, custom recovery, I recommend you download this app called Quick Boot. I'll put a link in that, uh, a link to this Google Play app in the description below. And what happens is when you open it up, uh, you get a whole bunch of options. You can choose. So if you ever want to boot into recovery, I just tap recovery and then ask for root access and that's it. So again, because this program is so wickedly easy and awesome to use, I recommend that you highly uh, donate to Wigfresh. And that's pretty much it. If you found this video useful, check out my website in the description below. Hit the like button, it does help. Subscribe, and thanks for watching.